So in this video, we're going to look at some of the analytical processes that we can carry out inside the Tigo. Um, and specifically, we're going to look at some of our picture processing options. Um, namely, we're going to look at the analytic inside the Tigo, which allows us to scrape um, across JPEG digital picture files uh, for EXIF data and for embedded geo GPS data. And we're also going to look at our analytical module, which allows you to OCR to conduct optical character recognition across those picture files. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to bring some files um, into the Tigo that we can work on. Uh, and it's a, it's a good little revision of, of how we get data into the Tigo uh, from just a, a logical folder. In other words, somebody supplied us a bunch of uh, digital picture files, um, perhaps from another exhibit or perhaps from a phone extraction. And we want to uh, analyze and search across that data and those pictures um, and any embedded data um, using Datigo. So I'll go ahead and click uh, from the home screen here, the familiar sort of three tile view that you'll be familiar with. Um, I'm just gonna click on acquire connected media. Um, and this time I'm not gonna be processing a physical disk or an image file. I've just got a folder somewhere on my local system or network uh, that contains a bunch of JPEG digital photographs. So I'll click on directory and then just browse out uh, to where I've got those particular pictures here. I'm going to select a folder, select the folder tile in Windows Explorer, and then the Tigo will open up a dialog window here, just confer, uh, confirming where I'm pointing my acquisition uh, at at the moment. And you can see it's uh, populated the file path at the top there of that little flyout window, showing the extraction target. This, you know, it's literally the file path uh, to the folder. So C, C colon users, Simon on my desktop. And there's a folder there, rather unimaginatively named JPEGs with good geo. Um, and also it's going to be, perform a logical extraction. It's not a physical thing. It's not a physical exhibit. It's not a USB flash drive or a hard drive I've got in my hand. It is a logical folder of files. So it's, uh, Detigo is all, you know, uh, intelligent enough at this stage to treat that as a logical acquisition. Now, of course, I could use the drop down arrow here and perform keywording and hashes across my acquisition at the same time. We've covered that in different videos uh, and it's not part of what I want to show you at the moment on this time, but the, the option is always there for you to keyword and hash value match at the same time you bring any data into the Tigo. And then if I just uh, direct your attention to the lower left hand side of the little dialog window here, you could see that we could also run a job queue straight away. We could load up one of our uh, pre-configured job queues and run any number of analytics uh, against this data. But for now, I just want to bring all the files which are in that folder, the folder name JPEGs with good geo into the Tigo. So I'm happy that the uh, file path is described accurately there. I'll go ahead and click start. And then the Tigo will just mount that up there. You'll see a little popular uh, pop out dialog window at the top here, just letting me know that the extraction is underway and it will default here to my jobs view straight away and give me an indication that those files are brought into it. Straight away, um, in the same fashion that you're probably familiar with already, the Tigo will create a case for you here. It's the one that's blued up, that's highlighted in my case tree list on the left hand side, and it's given it a meaningful name. It's given it um, a, a name for that exhibit at the moment just um, predicated on today's date time. And of course, you can change that just by a simple right click uh, and exhibit metadata, you could change that up, no problem at all. So you can see that in that logical extraction, it only took a few seconds, I've brought 120 files into the Detigo platform. Now, of course, I could just click here on exhibit content and view those files. Nothing to stop me doing that at all. You can see that in the normal way, Detigo wants to summarize files, the data that it's brought in uh, to the platform for you. So it's showing me I've got 120 files in total, 110 of those are pictures and 10 are video files. So I could just click on picture files and just start working my way through. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. No problem at all. Um, it'll load those files up for you now in gallery view. And I could just click through the files, see which ones uh, appear pertinent to my investigation um, and just manually examine them. But a lot of the time now, um, you know, we want to work smarter rather than harder. Uh, I know that this particular investigation 
we're, we're very keen to identify any files, any picture files, which may have been taken by the suspect whilst he was in Nigeria. So I'm going to use some of the analytical tools inside, to, inside Tigo to narrow the focus of my search. So from here, I'll just come up from Evidence Browser. You can see Tigo always wants to describe where you are in the platform. So you can see I've got the blue underlining here, just confirming for me that I'm in Evidence Browser. I'm going to click one stage back just to go up to Cases View here, um, and that will take me back out to my Case Tree View here. The case remains or the exhibit remains uh, highlighted, focused blue on the left-hand side, and I'm going to select some analytics to try and help me out with what I'm seeking to achieve. So I'll click on the Analytics tile at the bottom. I'll click on the Advanced View here, because I want to run a couple of different analytics at the same time. I'll just make that window big for you so you can see it at full size. So here, the first thing I want to do is scrape those JPEGs for EXIF data. Now, as most of you will be fully aware, um, you know, characteristic of the JPEG, the Joint Photographic Expert Group file format, is that we get this great embedded EXIF metadata, data about data simply a characteristic of how they defined the JPEG format when it was first put together years and years ago. So one of the good things for us as an investigator is if that device which took that photograph, if the device that took the picture knew where it was at the time the shutter was pressed, um, it's going to embed geodata, GPS data right inside the file data itself. And that's so often these days, uh, Digital photograph is often taken with a smartphone. Smartphones generally know where they are. You know, they're talking to at least three different cell towers at any one time, and often uh, using a technology called AGPS or assisted GPS to um, basically triangulate their position uh, and fix their position via GPS on the, on the ground. So often we get great geodata embedded right into those digital photographs. So we can scrape across those using the EXIF processor module. So here on the left hand side of this sort of vertical stack here, you can see that these are all or some of the available analytical operations I've got available to me inside the Tigo. So I'm just going to push that into the right hand side here into my queued job list. So there, push the EXIF processor across. Now at the same time, I'm going to push the OCR um, module into uh, run as well once I've done the EXIF scraping. So I can simply push that across. I'll speak more about OCR as the actual analytical is running because experience tells me that the OCRing, it's quite an intensive process, is going to take a little bit long than simply scooping up and scraping the EXIF metadata tags off. So I'll go ahead and click start down here on the bottom right hand side and let those processes run. Again, same deal. I get a little pop out window here letting me know that something's happening inside the Tigo. I'll quickly switch to jobs view simply by clicking on the word jobs. And you can see, look, straight away, the EXIF processor on a very small data set like this has you know, executed very, very quickly. Uh, I can see that I've got a bunch of metadata items extracted. More on that later. Some good information in there by the looks of things, which is great. But as you can see, the OCRing is running um, at the same, um, you know, as in the next, uh, job that I've got queued up in my analytical processes. And remember, I've only selected two here, but I could have 10 or 15 um, analytical processes all queued up right through to producing a report at any one time. And while we're waiting for OCR uh, to finish there, let's just refresh ourselves about what that actually means. Now, OCR, uh, as most of you will know, stands for Optical Character Recognition. This is a really powerful technology built right into the Tigo for you which allows you to pick out those pictures of words in photographs. Now, we all know we can keyword search. It's document files, text files, email, chat from a mobile phone. We can search for keywords that we describe. We may want to construct a keyword list specific to our investigation, the name of the, sub the suspects, their email addresses, their mobile telephone numbers, their WhatsApp usernames the make and model of the cars they drive, their place of work, place of worship, where they live, their address, their social security number, any number of things make great keyword lists. But um, most of you will be aware that we can only 
search those across text which has been entered as a result of somebody actually entering those words on a keyboard. You know, they'll be held in UTF or, or in any other number of coding uh, formats that we can search across. The trick is when someone actually takes a photograph uh, of a document, takes a photograph of the document, that is then a picture of the words. It's not got onto the data, if you like, as a result of somebody typing the words in that we can then search. It is a picture of the words on a piece of paper. So we could search all day long for those, the picture of those words and we would not get keyword hits. Now OCR turns those pictures of words into searchable text. It's an absolute lifesaver if you're really serious about conducting your digital investigations properly. Um, and we'll show, well, I'll show you some results of that in a minute. It might make a little bit more sense. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with OCR, but it's a very powerful technology. It's built right into Jitigo. It's one of the available analytics for you. Um, and it's a real lifesaver sometimes, especially in this age where we live, where so much communication is by mobile phone. You know, people will take screen grabs of a WhatsApp chat group, which is, you know, home button and power button at the same time or whatever they'd be using, you know, be it iPhone or an Android phone. And then they will WhatsApp those pictures to each other. You know, there's a fair bit of anti-forensics going on with some of the bad guys, and they know that makes our life more difficult when we come to keywording across the data. OK, good. So now you can see that the EXIF processor has run, the OCRing image to text has run, and we've got some, uh, you know, some results that we could go straight out and view for you. Now, I just want to make those results a little bit more meaningful. So I'm going to go in um, and show you some of that data um, in some other cases, which I've got where I know there's some sort of good data, which will um, uh, illustrate what I'm hoping to show you here. So I'm going to select this case, very, very similar set of data. At this time, we've done the EXIF, we've scraped for OCR in this um, case. I'll come up to exhibit content by simply clicking uh, the word exhibit content and the little icon in the microscope there. Um, I'm going to go straight out to um, my picture files. So here at this stage, um, I'll just wait for those to load up in gallery view for you. Um, I could, you know, similarly build a filter now um, and, and narrow my focus down to the files that I'm interested in. And wherever you see a little icon here, a little icon that's been dropped on the top right hand side of a picture, we know that we've got some form of result. You know, Detigo has automatically tagged and flagged that file for your attention. Um, because it's got a result of some process that you've run against it. Okay. Now I'm just going to come back up one view again, click on the cases word here, just come back up to cases so I get my tile summary view and show you a really good feature to narrow your focus down. Now you can see because I've run, because I have run the EXIF parser, the EXIF analytic, I've now got a new tile here, GPS coordinates. I'll go ahead and click that. And that will summarize all of the GPS geodata in those picture files for us. Uh, just wait for that to load up here. Now, this is a really nice new feature uh, in Detigo version four. that You can see instantly we're getting some indications about where the hotspots are, for where picture files have been taken in different geographical re um, areas. Now, we were interested in Nigeria. So I'm just going to narrow my focus down here, just center that up, click on that part here, and that will give me a, instantly a big zoomed in view of um, uh, what looks like the city of Abuja. Let me just come around to here. I'm just going to, yeah, okay, just coming out one level. But yeah, that is Abuja in Nigeria. So that's the, in the federal capital territory of Nigeria. That's the, uh, the city of Abuja up in the north there, which is uh, Nigeria's capital. Okay, good. So I've got two hotspots in the city, one where seven photographs have been taken and one where 38 photographs have been taken. So again, I can center that up here, click on one level plus up and start to zoom in on those pins. No problem with that at all here. And I can move in. Now this mapping, we get six levels of zoomed mapping built into the tool. So we can click down to six levels um, with built-in mapping that's built into the actual Detigo program itself. Now, obviously, there's a couple of different ways we can expand on that functionality. We can have offline or online mapping. 
You know, some people, you know, in, in, in this new way in which we're working, are quite happy to have a number of their forensic workstations outward facing onto the Internet um, or they're working out in the field and they're happy to have an Internet connection there where it can um, reach out to Google or Microsoft Street View and uh, more accurately map those pins for you. But similarly, we can set the Tigo up for you or help you set the Tigo up in such a way that you have offline mapping. So you'll have a great big blob of data somewhere on your system that Tigo will point at, but it's reading it from your local system and not the internet. So here I can see there's a bunch of pins here, all in close proximity um, to a hotel by the looks of it called the Bon Hotel, um, Stratton, Asakuro. So I can just click on the pins here at that stage and that will show me a thumbnail of the individual pictures that relate to those pins. So it's a really powerful way of, of, of narrowing our focus into a uh, geographical area that we're interested in. Uh, and the thumbnail will show you uh, the lat and the long, even the altitude you were at when the photograph was taken um, and give you the file name. So you can isolate those files later on in Detigo if you needed to. Now, that person looks like they were stood still. Perhaps, you know, from looking at the, what's actually depicted in the thumbnail here, I would say they're probably at least two or three stories up in the air here. So perhaps they're at an upper hotel window, shooting some photographs out onto the street um, in close succession by the looks of things, because the Latin long is not moving at all. So they're clearly in a stationary position. But again, hope you can see it's a really good way of narrowing the focus of your investigation down and actually making sense of the geo data that's in the in some of those photographs. Remember, the phone needed to be needed to know where it was at the time. So either connected to a hotel Wi-Fi or speaking to GPS or actually connected to a cell phone service via a SIM card. OK, let's come back up to cases view again and talk about the OCR in that we also ran um, on that case earlier on here. So I'm going to come out to uh, a different uh, case here. I'll just use the little downward facing black arrow here to collapse that back up into my media acquisitions folder on this particular Detigo storage volume. I'm going to open up another top level folder here. This one happens to be called Ops Security and Policing. I use a little inward facing arrow there to show all of the exhibits that sit within that top level folder uh, at the moment. I've got a, an exhibit I've called OCR keyword hits. So let's just select that one up. Very small um, selection of data, literally only 19 picture files. Um, but um, I'm going to fire one or two of these up just to explain the OCRing analytic uh, that we've been talking about. So here you can see I've got a bunch of picture files here um, where the indexing has been able to actually pick out words uh, within that actual um, uh, individual uh, picture. So again, you can see some of these here, the one on the highlighted that's on the right hand side there. I've got a file with the file name 11.jpg. It looks very much like someone has simply taken a picture of a newspaper or a magazine. But um, the Tigo, so you can see here, look, you know, literally the first word on within. So it's a picture of the word depicted in the picture is the city name Copenhagen. Now, if we did a keyword search for Copenhagen, we wouldn't normally be finding that word. It's a picture of the word. It isn't there as a result of someone typing in Copenhagen on a keyboard. Let's have a look at this file here. We've got a, a picture file here called operator.jpg. Uh, I can hover my mouse there to get the little preview view and gallery view. But let's just go ahead, double click the file and open it fully um, inside the Tigo. So here, what looks very much like uh, from looking at it from its vertical orientation, the fact that I've got O2 Wi-Fi call, I've got the time in the top center, I've got a battery reading on the top right hand side, along with a upward facing arrow. That's clearly a screen grab off somebody's mobile phone. Just by the look of the font and the, the way it's laid out, I would say that's an Instagram post. Um, and we're looking at someone who's probably been browsing Instagram, uh, has been looking at an Instagram group called Military Ops. That's described up here on the top right hand side of the um, sorry, top left hand side of the image. Remember that as soon as I put my cursor on the picture, 
Um, Detigo will just make that into a little magnifying glass for me. That can be useful occasionally. You know, we can get some certainly some interesting uh, extra information without exporting the file out to my desktop and then using uh, Windows Photo Viewer or something to zoom in. Now, it's a really good example because someone's probably just like the look of that image. We've got some swarthy, you know, special forces operator there with looks like a bag of drugs, a big handful of hundred dollar bills. And he's having a bonfire down here, burning drugs, burning money. So it's a good day in the office for this particular operator. Um, but for us, the relevant part is, you know, there's a bunch of text which has been captured in here, but it's a picture of these words. So military ops, 20 kilograms of pure Afghan heroin, etc. Now we could have a keyword in our keyword list of kilograms or pure Afghan or heroin, and we would not in the normal course of events get any hits. However, because I've run the OCRing across this image, um, we will get hits. It'll add it to our backend index inside the Tigo and we'll be able to get hits, which is a great feature. Now, I just wanted to check this and, and, and show you what's going on under the hood. So on the left hand side stack here, you can see at the moment we're natively describing it as a picture. I will go ahead and click on text index then click on the blue tile here for image text OCR. And you can see this is all of the actual ASCII characters, if you like, that it's been able to pick out of the image. So slipping back through, really, I've got I've got some clutter here, which looks like some sort of false positive. But then I've got O2 Wi-Fi call 1737. 79 percent. I can check that on the data in the picture. O2 Wi-Fi call 1737, 79 percent. And really, the last text that I would hope it had been able to collect would be on operations with A. You can see at the bottom there, it's just clipped off the very, very top of another um, line of characters underneath. Now, we could probably make an informed guess about what that says, but it would be asking a lot of our OCR. So if I come down, so really I'm hoping that the OCR captured data ends with on operations with A. I go back up to text index, image text, and sure enough, on operations with A. So it's captured pretty much all of the available pictures of words inside that image. Now here, just to sort of prove it to you, I've already on this set of data run some keywording. And you can see because we've run the OCRing, I have a keyword on keyword Afghan, I have um, a hit on keyword explore, on heroin, on kilograms, on military ops, on Taliban. You get the idea. Very, very powerful piece of functionality for when you're processing digital picture files. Now, I'll come back up to picture, resize my uh, Detigo OmniViewer window here for you, collapse that down, and just come back to my gallery view for this small case. So, in summary, we've looked um, we've looked at Detigo's just two of Detigo's analytical processes are built into the tool for you to use. Its ability to scrape off the EXIF metadata and pass that out for you, and then the ability to OCR to conduct optical character recognition across any words that happen to be depicted in uh, pictures for you. Really useful piece of functionality built into Detigo. I hope that's been of use. We're going to make a bunch of these video files just to talk you through some of the analytical processes that are available to you. And later on, we'll have a look at another really great piece of functionality, which is the automatic object ID, the machine learning, AI driven analytic, which will help you process hundreds and hundreds of thousands of JPEGs and only tag and flag return the ones which depict any number of categories of objects, edged weapons, firearms, drugs, cash, um, you know, Islamist extremist symbols, jihadi iconography, all sorts of exciting categories coming to Detigo for you to be able to utilize in your investigations. Okay, thanks so much for your attention. Bye.